Hey guys, Andrew Sluter, pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Asheville, North Carolina, coming to you with probably the cringiest video I've ever done, and I'm not even the reason why it's cringy. Caleb Robertson is the object of cringe this morning. Last night on August 22nd, I debated him for the second time on Is Water Baptism Necessary for Salvation? He says yes, I say no. Now, I went down there on his show, and with my hand raised in the air, God strike me dead if I'm lying, he tries to kick me off his show. Unto the Lord, he tries to kick me off his show. Let me tell you what happened. He told me for the second debate that we could only get an hour. I said, I'm not driving three hours one way for an hour debate. He said, well, let me see if I can get us 90 minutes. I said, okay, well, if you can get us 90 minutes, I will come. He comes back and says, okay, I can guarantee you 90 minutes. I said, okay, if you can guarantee me 90 minutes, I'll come. I go down there under the impression that he could only get 90 minutes of airtime because that's what he told me. Well, I find out this morning when I watch the live stream of the debate, see, when they have their live stream uh, on their YouTube channel, the live stream, they start live streaming before the actual debate begins. So what they do is they put up a little picture with information about the debate. And I'm going to show you the video here. You can clearly see that for seven and a half minutes, watch the timestamp, for seven and a half minutes, that picture is up there showing the debate from 9 to 11 two hours. Here's the clip. Good evening, everybody. This is What Does the Bible Say? This there you see, folks. He intended for this thing to go two hours. What he wanted was me off for an hour or for 30 minutes so that he could say and twist and manipulate the whole thing in his favor and have an hour or 30 minutes of me not being there. He wanted an entire Andrew Sluter free rebuttal. Now, if that wasn't, if that's not even the worst thing, he goes on and says, he says before the entire debate begins that he's okay with me having more talking time because in the last debate, I said, I'm not, I said, this coming debate, I am not doing a call in session like we did the last time because you interrupted me. Every time I try to pin you down and make a point, you just move on to the next caller. So I said, I'm not doing a call in session this time. It, it just it, It's not going to be profitable for me to come down there and do that, a call-in session, because of how you handled it last time. So he said, okay, that's fine. There will be no call-in session at all. So the debate goes very bad for him. I mean, it goes extremely bad. You can I'm not going to comment much further, but you can just go back and watch it. It doesn't go well. But here's the video saying that he was okay with me having more talking time than him. And so what we're going to start out with, friends, uh, we are going to let Andrew go first tonight. He's going to have the first speech. But I'd like to just give a, an idea or a word before we get going to some of the community because uh, I don't want to treat Andrew unfairly. I mean, I have no problem with him having more talking time than I do. So there you have it, folks. He said it. And in fact, before we even began the debate, when I first showed up, he said, oh, I debated a homosexual one time. And I think that's on his YouTube channel. He says it. And he had a lot more talking time than me. So, you know, I, I'm okay with you having more talking time. I want to be fair. So we go through the debate. It goes very badly for him. I mean, he does a very poor job, can't answer the questions. And then we get to the 90 minutes. And he says, okay, well, we guaranteed you 90 minutes, and I'm going to show you the video where all this happens. I'm, it's going to be uncut, unedited. I'm going to show you the entire conversation. But he says, okay, your 90 minutes are up, and I know you, and are up, and I know you said you didn't want to do calls, but do you want to do calls? And I said, yeah, that's fine. We'll do the call then. I will do the call. You've given me, you've been gracious to me. Let's do the calls because I know you guys like to do that. And we both agree to do the call-in session and to continue for the other 30 minutes that he told me he couldn't get. And you're going to see the first call-in was for me. A guy tries to pin me about water in 1 John 5, and I answer him with scripture upon scripture. Caleb Robertson can't combat what I said, and he gets mad. Never offers a rebuttal for what I said. Never comments on the call. As soon as I'm done speaking, he says, Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our original plan and we're going to give you a five-minute closing, uh, closing statement and then you're going to be done. And he tries to kick me off. Here's what happened. So, oh, friends, I really don't have a problem with this, but let me just point out that he's only asked me really one question where I got five minutes to give a, an, an answer. But his question was so unrelated 
Holy Spirit baptism, he goes from John 3, 5 to being a physical birth. Then he wants to bring in Holy Spirit baptism. That's not even what we're talking about. So in one sense, I don't mind that he's not pitching me questions. And I'm really only getting to answer like every five minutes. I get to have a little bit here and there with him. He's taking up 15 minutes of this crossfire because his questions are so weak. I mean, I have no problem with him having more talking time than I do. Now, Andrew, we basically guaranteed you 90 minutes. You've gotten them. Now, do you not want to take phone calls? Um, you know what? We will take phone calls. Okay. Because I know you guys like to do that. Yeah. And you've been gracious tonight, so I'll return the favor. Okay. Everybody, Charles, people in the back, is line three for us? Yep. yep. Okay, here we go. What's time savings for this? Uh, How about this? How about this? Now, I'm pitching this out there. How about we get a minute? We each get a minute for each phone call. Is that fair? Uh, We'll play it by ear. Hello. Right. Hey, you're on live. This is what the Bible says. That's fair. Okay. Now, let's say this, Micah. I don't really want to do that. He basically gets to be, I'm saying, satisfied. I get to jump in as much as I want. I mean, he got way more of the talking time last time. So, I mean, I have no problem with him having more talking time than I do. This is going to be for a real crossfire with the phone calls. Okay, you're on. What does the Bible say? Okay. Anybody, Charles, people in the back? Okay. All right. Hello, you're on live. Okay, whoever this is is like. Hello. Yeah, hello, you need to turn your video down. Okay. Hello. Hello, you're live. Hi. Um, you, uh, Andrew, you said that, um, in, that in John chapter 3, that flesh. Uh, means uh, that water means flesh uh, when Jesus came and met Nicodemus by night um, and could you explain what water means in first John chapter 5 verses 7 and 8 could you explain what water means there in first John chapter 5 verse uh, 7 and 8 sure I believe Thank that you. yeah I believe that this is talking about the physical attributes of Jesus Christ. I think it is a physical birth because what you have is you have people. The book of 1 John was written because you had a bunch of people called the Gnostics who were denying the fact that Jesus came in the flesh. And that's very apparent from 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And then you have 1 John 5, 6, and 7. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. And I clearly think that this is a reference to the physical nature of Jesus Christ, a physical birth. God, 1 Timothy 3, 16. God was manifest in the flesh. And then you have verse number 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And it's interesting that he uses the word word there and not son because that is a direct cross-reference back to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And then verse 14, and the word was made what? Flesh. So the word is coming in the flesh by water, physical birth. I think that is extremely clear that this is talking about the physical aspect and the physical birth and nature of Jesus Christ because that is exactly what John is combating with this epistle. Okay, friends, so actually what we are going to do, Andrew, I'm going to give you five minutes, 1034. We're actually going to revert back to our original plan, original plan to give you the 90 minutes, and we're going to let you go, okay? Well, I'm fine with the current thing we're doing right okay. now. So I'm going to give you five minutes to make a closing statement and we're going to go back to our original plan. Oh, so I don't get to do the phone calls anymore. Right. We're I going see. to give you five minutes, and you're going to give a closing statement. So why the change now? Well, honestly, I don't want to have brethren debating you. I'm saying, we've already done this. You've got the 90 minutes that you demanded. 
we bent over backwards basically to give you everything that you wanted and we're just not getting equal talking time. I have no problem with him having more talking time than I do. Um, at this point, we like well, to have I, the I, I, took, I took a minute. Oh, I don't, how about this? How about you get two minutes of talking time after the phone call? So, I'll Andrew, I'll you take just a got minute. 90 minutes with what you asked for. Mm -hmm. And you said if we could get longer, and I've got the text message to prove it, if we could go longer, that we could. If you could get it longer. And I said, if you Did you ask me, for 90 minutes? And I got back with you. I said, because, I talked to the station owner and said, we got 90 minutes. Because you had said that we could only go an hour. And I said, I can't drive all the way for an hour. And you said, I can get 90 minutes. And if it goes on, you said, if we ask, I think we can go longer. Okay. That's exactly what you said. So, friends, got the text that's fine. We're going to stick with and it. And I'll give you more talking time. Okay, that's good. So, okay. here's what we're going to do, friends. But thanks for trying to kick me off your show. <laughs> well, what, man? After two hours last week and 90 minutes tonight, and all of it's free to you except for the driving time, this is what we're going to do. We're going to keep going. We're going to drop this, I'm saying, soft stuff where he gets 15 minutes to go, and we're going to really drill, okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. So let's go back, friends, to the clip from last week, what he actually said, and let's really get some answers out of this. Let's look at what he said about calling on the name of the Lord that we have already referenced out of 2 Timothy. There you have it, folks. He tries to kick me off his show because it is going so poorly for him that he wants me gone. And he tries to kick me off after he agreed to let me stay on for an extra 30 minutes that he said he never had to begin with. Now, I want you to go back. The video speaks for itself. It's very clear. Unto the Lord, these guys are liars, they're manipulators, and if things don't go their way, they just want to get away from it, kick the guy off, or interrupt him, or just get, you know, it's very clear. So go back and watch the entire debate, and especially go back and watch the last 30 minutes where after he finally lets me, he lets me stay on, I have to convince him to let me stay on after he told me I could, go back and watch the last 30 minutes or so of the debate where Caleb gets in the biggest gom you've ever seen and falls over himself and breaks his spiritual neck. Folks, water baptism is not essential for salvation. Don't let the Robertson clan do what they do best lie and manipulate you with the scriptures. Have a great day.